So here we are, having been in that amazing palace up there, converted in 2000 into a f superb hotel. The bikes are lined up, ready for day eight of Motorbike Adventures of India. And we're off on the next day of adventures. Da -da -da! It's good to get back on the bike. It gets a bit of breeze going through the jacket. Even at this time of the morning, it's nine o'clock and it's up into the twenties. It's Roastville's. Which is tickety boo. And as we leave the gate, let the adventures begin. There's a massive contrast where we were staying last night. Within spitting distance, there's this village that we've just been through where you know they're just getting by and yet we've been trek to unbelievable luxury in the rooms and the food and the way that they've been serving us M area of massive contrast And now we're on the main highway. Heading towards our next destination. That's one of the things you've got to be careful of on the roads here. They've got multiple sleeping policemen placed across the road. But if you hit them at speed, you're either going to come off or at the very least damage your bike. And they're not exactly standing out. You've got to be really vigilant to see these things. One of the guys has been caught out this morning and hit it extremely hard. Luckily the bike's okay. All that there is marble. All different shades of marble. Look at it all. You could call it Marble City. Marble and granite. And we're still going past places that sell marble. That's what you call an awful lot of marble. Look at it all. Marble and granite. Look at the size of that on the back of there. 
you can see the axle bending. Unbelievable huge chunk of rock. And we're still going through marble. Mile after mile after mile. It's unique to Rajasthan, this region, uh, with all the marble and the granite, which is why there's so much. Welcome to Motorbike Adventures of India. Three on the bike, they don't care. <laughs> I love it. It's brilliant. Let's see how many are on this bike. There's three on that one as well. So we're stopping here for some chai at the Sri Balaji Palace. Breakfast, lunch, dinner. And we've just been over quite a new looking flyover, which is very good. But this is one of the little places we've stopped at. And there's Santosh on the left and Prakram on the right. And me behind the camera. Woohoo! I'm back into a little village area now. You can see the villages, they're the same as the ones we've been through before. Everything was based on finding water source, they then established, but I think this village will have been based on the fact that it's right next to the major highway. But off we went into the distance to get back into the desert, so that it wasn't just a boring ride. We wanted more adventures, we wanted more excitement. And one of the guys did get more excitement. <laughs> and that excitement consisted of going through a couple of ravines where the tarmac disappeared and the talcum powder with rocks appeared because this isn't sand this is too fine to be sand and what had happened to one of the guys in fact he touched his front brake the front wheel locked and off he came so I'm just being rather careful going through because I didn't want the same to happen to me but this added a new dimension to the adventure
having gone through the ravine, it all opened up again, but the road didn't get any better. Oh, this is what you call back roads, isn't it, boys and girls? Oh, yes, Uncle Kev. This isn't your riding through Germany, Spain or France, is it? Look at the hell. Stay in fabulous Rajasthan, in converted palaces and ride roads that have been produced to kill you. Now we got very close towards the end of this adventure, or this stage of the adventure. We're coming into the village where our next accommodation was to be discovered. And where it was? Well, just wait and see. Now well, he's a he's a village and a half. Yeah, Biger. Interesting village, isn't it? Very interesting. The amount of bikes. As we know, that's the main source of transport around here. Now we're just turning off the main road through the village. Down into what I would only describe as a bit of a side street. And this took me by surprise. Very narrow street, very narrow street, quite, uh, quite dominating really. Here I am thinking, where are we going? Surely, we must be lost because nobody would have anything where we could be sleeping in, in amongst all of this. Could they? And then through the archway, we turned left, and wow. This is one of the things about this adventure tour. Where you stay is going to take you by surprise. The accommodation is fantastic. The adventure is fantastic. Oh, happy days! When Jesus walked And here we are at the next palace boys and girls It's quite amazing isn't it really when you go through all of those villages and those back streets and those narrow alleys And then you find something like this 
slap bang in the middle. Now, having arrived at Nimaj Palace, the owner decided he would take us out to have a look around. And we went into a village. This village had 900 people. One tap for drinking water. And in this guy's backyard, who was a potter, this is what he did. No it's electric. Exactly the same process. Working it's from to torches the on the iPhones. It's exactly the same process. Uh, and this uh, is what he produced. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It took me... Well, it, it just blew me away. That this guy, here he was. Just wait till you see what he does. Amazing. The spinning itself automatically will ship, ship it like a six. This is a video thing, man. Mm. That's unbelievable. This one's bigger. In the middle of India. In a village with 900 people. Whoa, no on. electricity. A self propelled turning stone making pots exactly the same way as we do back in Britain. But he does seem to be a lot more skilled than people I've ever seen. This is beautiful. Huh? Look at that. And the wheel's tilting a bit now, but he's able to go around and just follow it around. Whoa, <laughs> it's beautiful. <clears throat> Whoa, <laughs> and there we have it. There.